Hi, welcome to our first uh, lecture in microeconomics. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to present you some very basic uh, essential stuff. So it's going to be like an introduction to economics more. Uh, I'm going to discuss the notion of market with you. Uh, I will present briefly demand and supply as major economic forces, as well as I will discuss briefly the idea of market equilibrium. So, uh, what economics is actually about? Most uh, of people, when asked what they associate economics with, they tend to say money, but actually economics is not about money. Economics is much more about choices, choices that people make. Uh, people are central to economics. That is why economics is included in social sciences, because actually this is science about people. Why economics is uh, so important? Well, basically because of scarcity. The idea of scarcity is present in our everyday life. Scarcity is a kind of effect of a permanent conflict between two things. One thing being limited resources. All the resources that we have at our disposal are limited. Uh, you can speak a few languages, for instance, but it's always a limited number of languages that you speak. Uh, you can have a lot of money, but the amount of money that you have at your disposal is always limited, no matter how big it is. It's always limited. The time that you have is limited. The number of people that can work for the economy is limited. So all resources whether you look from the individual perspective or collective perspective or country level perspective, all resources are limited. What's unlimited? Our wants, our needs. You always like to have something better than you have. You always want to have something more than you have. If you have a little flat, a little apartment, wouldn't you like to have a house? If you have a house, wouldn't you like to have a swimming pool with that? Wouldn't you like to have a bigger, more comfortable, more fancy car? And this is the clash. On one hand, we've got limited resources, so limited possibilities to produce uh, and deliver things to people. On the other hand, we've got unlimited human needs and the question of people who want to have more, more and more. So if we cannot have everything that we want because of the limited resources, there comes the question of choices, many choices that we have to make. And one of the central uh, ideas about economics is how to distribute scarce goods among the society. If the number of apartments is limited, who should get them? If the number of brand new Ferrari cars is limited, then who should get them? And there are basically four ideas, uh, four types of logic that allows to uh, answer this question, how to distribute scarce goods among the society. The problem of distributing scarce goods among the society is actually important for any society, for any group of entities that you can think of. So this problem is important for bees in the hive or for ants any creatures, any animals that live together, they have to solve this kind of problem. But obviously, animals solve this problem using their animal instinct. How about humans? Uh, four ways of answering the question of how to distribute scarce goods. It could be tradition, first of all. This is the oldest way of solving this problem. So if you think of some Indian tribe that hunt down a buffalo, they know what to hunt for because that's the kind of tradition that they hunt buffaloes. Uh, they know how to do it because they hunt for buffaloes in a traditional way using their tools. 
Uh, and when they actually hunt it down, they divide this dead buffalo between the members of their society, again, according to their tradition. The second idea is market. We can try to use market solutions to find out what to produce, how to produce, and for whom, how to distribute our production. On one hand, market is very valuable notion because of its efficiency. However, market is not associated very much with justice and firms. Market can be possibly replaced with planning. Someone can plan for the economy what to produce, how to produce, and for whom. This kind of economy is called centrally planned economy. Last but not least, we could try to merge those two things. We could try to merge market and plan. So we could give the priority to market solutions, but sometimes we could correct them with some kind of some elements of planning. What are advantages and disadvantages of all presented solutions? First, tradition. For tradition, you could say it's very simple. It's very clear. Everyone knows uh, what tradition is. So everyone knows what to produce, how to produce, and there is no discussion about for whom it should be produced. The major disadvantage of tradition, however, is that it refers to very stable environments. It refers to some kind of stability. If you look at the modern world, the world that is changing so quickly, uh, it's kind of difficult to imagine that tradition could be used to solve all our contemporary problems. For the market, as previously mentioned, markets are very efficient, very effective, very fast, but they have their drawbacks, they have their disadvantages, they have their imperfections. And those imperfections, at least some of them, are very serious, are very important. Central planning seems to be very appealing. If we can plan everything and just carry out our plan, that seems as a very good idea, as opposed to the market and chaotic operations, trials and errors, you know, plan makes everything very neat, very coordinated. However, in practice, we know that central planning did not actually work well. Central planners lack sufficient information and they find it extremely difficult to coordinate the whole economy. So in most countries, what we see as a system for solving economic problems, including distribution of scarce goods among the society, is market and plan. The dominance of market solutions, together with some government intervention that changes market solution to make it more compliant with people's needs, with people's preferences. So what actually is market? You can think of the notion of market, the idea of market, uh, in many different languages. So you've got the Polish word for market, which is rynek. You've got the Russian version, rynok. You've got Spanish mercado. You've got obviously English market. You've got German markt uh, and French marche. Um, in all those languages, market primarily is a certain place, like a square in the center of the town where people come. Some of them want to sell something. Some of them want to buy something. So they interact with each other. And that leads to setting prices, 
creating certain turnover of the market, uh, specifying some um, detailed conditions on how the transaction will be performed, when the money will be paid, in what form, when the product will be delivered, how it would be delivered, all the uh, things that are related with uh, transactions. That is the so-called, we could call it, classical view of market. But actually, nowadays, market is quite often not any physical place. Uh, you can buy many things using uh, Allegro or eBay, uh, and actually you never meet the seller. Actually, you cannot point to any specific place where this transaction took place. That's kind of virtual. Because the essence of the market is not about the place, it's about interactions. So we will uh, define market as a process, process of interactions between sellers on one hand, buyers on the other hand, and the result of this interaction is setting the price and all other conditions uh, necessary for performing transactions. Why do we need a market or why do we value market? Well, there are at least five important reasons for that. First of all, market evaluates goods, meaning market as a process is able to assign value to certain goods. Um, even if sometimes market is not very perfect about that, it is still the best mechanism for evaluating goods that we have. Market tends also to provide important information. For instance, uh, would you like your children to be dentists? Is it a good job? Well, if you go to the dentist, then you can see their prices, you can see uh, how they work, you can see that actually being a dentist is a worthwhile career choice in terms of money. Dentists are usually pretty rich. This is information that comes from the market, many other information as well. Market enables rational use of resources, which means simply that whenever you go out of your room, you try to switch off the light. Why is that so? Because if you don't do that, you pay for the light that you're not actually using. So you get a kind of incentive to switch off the light if you don't use it. A rational use of resources. You have to pay for the resources that you use. Therefore, you try to use not too much of them. You use as much as you need, and usually not more. Market also facilitates equilibrium in economy. What does that mean? Question. How much bread is baked daily in the region of Gdansk? Probably no one knows the precise answer. But a very good, actually, answer is daily in the region of Gdansk, bakers bake the amount of bread that is sufficient for consumers. And this is pretty clever, right? Uh, you don't have any problems when you want to buy bread. Bakers, they do not overproduct bread, meaning they do not produce twice as much as they can sell. So market takes care about the amount of bread that is sufficient for us, for consumers. And it's not too big for bakers. The last, the most controversial or difficult to understand uh, question uh, of why we value market so much is that market verifies social usefulness of goods. Some goods are produced because the society wants to buy them. So the society finds this particular good socially useful. There are some old models of cars that are not produced anymore. Why not? Because the society does not find them useful enough. 
Obviously, this last point that I discuss here is a bit controversial. How about drugs, for instance, and I don't mean aspirin, I mean things like cocaine more, right? Are they socially useful? And the answer to this question, whether cocaine and other hard drugs are socially useful, is surprisingly positive. It is positive because even if they are illegal, there is a part of society that finds them useful enough to buy and to pay for them. Therefore, there are producers that would produce those drugs even though it is illegal. So actually, social usefulness is a bit controversial. But if we understand it correctly, then we would know, for instance, the ways of fighting drug production. It's not about limiting the production. It's more about hitting the demand. If we want to fight drugs in an efficient way, we should try to kill the demand. So try to persuade in an efficient way to your kids that drugs are bad. If they don't buy them, no one would be able to make business on producing them. It's that simple. Even though market is very important, and we are going to refer to market very much during the whole course here, remember, market, like anything in the world, is not perfect. It's got some imperfections, and therefore we cannot treat market solutions as the best, as the unquestionable solutions by definition. Some of market solutions are pretty good. Some of market solutions can be much worse, and we will have to learn about some tools or some ideas of how to evaluate.